teach you about supply and demand. It's one of the most key terms and concepts we'll learn in economics, and it's probably one of the first topics you'll cover in school. But it's also useful for smaller businesses, all the way up to the largest of retail companies, to work out what the right price is to maximise profits, and to understand what their consumers want. So let's go through what supply and demand is, and how it works, on today's Cash Concepts, with me, Alex Chow. So, as you've probably gathered, supply is the amount of goods and services that are in circulation or being produced. And demand is the amount of those goods and services that people want or, or demand. Supply and demand also affect the price of which the company wants to set their prices. So it's very useful for companies to work out what the right price is to maximise their profits. Let's see how this works in an example of, say, pizza. Um, but before we go ahead with this supply and demand graph, just bear in mind that what I'm teaching in this lesson, all the concepts I teach in this lesson, only remain true when you're in a free market situation um, or where there are voluntary transactions. Basically where a buyer can choose what he wants to buy and not want to buy and sellers can choose what they want to sell or not want to sell. Anyway, for a supply and demand graph, the y-axis is always the price of the goods um, and the x-axis is always the quantity, either quantity supply or quantity demand, it depends on which line you're looking at. So we're going to just start with the supply curve. This curve starts from the bottom left all the way to the top right, um, but it changes uh, in steepness and curve, um, and it can be curved depending on what product we're talking about. But for simplicity, we're just going to stick with a perfectly linear line, just to make it simple. The law of supply tells us that there's a distinct relationship between the quantity supplied and the price. Um, this makes sense, and we can see how this works in practice by using our supply curve and just the graph that we've drawn currently. So if we just look at, have a look at this graph of just the supply curve, um, it still makes sense on its own, because it's basically saying, if the price were high, producers would want to produce a whole lot because they get more profit out of producing, uh, out of selling their product for a higher service, in this case, pizza. So, um, how we work this out, so let's say uh, it was a $20 pizza, we, we just mark that on the graph, so they would give us the $20 there, and then we'd draw it all the way to the supply, and then we'll draw that down, and then we get the quantity that they'll produce. And let's say 100 pizzas, and that's a lot of pizzas, right? Um, now, when the price is low, let's say um, when it's $5, so it's complete opposite, producers won't actually want to produce that much, because w when, you, um, when you sell the pizzas at such a low price, you probably won't get any profits, and you'd get minimal profits if you even did. So to work this out again, we can draw the supply line, and then go down to the quantity, and we find that, say, there's 10 pizzas being produced for this, this um, hypothetical situation. Now we've gone over what the supply line um, shows us, let's move on to the demand curve. So the demand curve is basically the opposite of the supply curve. So it goes from the top left to the, but down to the bottom right, so it creates like an X. And um, again, this can fluctuate, it can be curved, it can be different steepness, and I'll cover that in a later video. But for the time being, and for the sake of simplicity again, let's just make this a linear line. So similarly to the supply, demand, and the quantity uh, of the product, or the pizza demanded, um, is directly related to the price charged for each pizza or product. Uh, well, that's a bit obvious, right? Because when the price is low, consumers want to buy more, and when the price is high, consumers want to buy a lot less. So we're, for this graph, we're just taking into account the price. We'll move on to other factors later. Um, again, let's have a look at just the demand without supply, so we can get rid of the supply. Uh, and we're going to just do the same as we did for supply. So um, we're going to say, let's just do a hypothetical situation of another $20 pizza. It's a pretty expensive pizza. So if we have a look at our graph, we can draw the line to there. And then we can see that the quantity demanded is 10 pizzas. The consumers don't want to buy that many pizzas because the price is so expensive. Um, and when... Uh, when we've got a price of, let's say, $5, um, same as before, 
we can see that because you don't want to buy a whole lot because a five dollar pizza is really cheap anyway so putting this together we can see using the same method of drawing the line and then finding the price using the quantity on the x-axis we can see that when the price is high um, consumers want to buy a lot less but but producers want to produce a whole lot so this is where we get onto something called a surplus this is where one um, a good or service is produced more than the demand there is for so you get a lot more um, pizzas in this case then people want to buy because the price is so high so if you're the producer and you're thinking I've got all these pizzas and no one wants to buy them what do you do you lower the price right because that would entice more consumers to buy your product so let's say we lower it to five dollars now if we look at this graph now it shows us that consumers want to buy a whole lot because it's so cheap now but the, the producers don't want to produce that much at that price this is this area is instead not a surplus but it's called a shortage it's where as you've probably guessed there's not enough supply to outpace the demand for the product now there's one point um one price which suppliers are incentivized to produce the same amount that buyers demand this is called the equilibrium price and it's really easy to find by just finding where the x meets so if we have a look at our graph that is the equilibrium price say 15 dollars per pizza usually without government intervention a product or service in a free market society will usually find its way to the equilibrium price because producers will want to like raise the price and lower the price raise the price and lower the price until they get to that equilibrium price where demand equals supply so far, the only thing changing the supply and the demand is the price, but we all know that that's not the only thing that can change supply and the demand. Other factors which aren't price, which change supply and demand, actually shift these lines one way or the other. You might not really get what I mean, so let's go into an example. Say there's a heat wave, or it's like summer. It means demand for products like sunglasses will increase because of the change in temperature. So. Say a supply and demand graph for sunglasses averagely looks like this. Um, let's say at the $10 price for sunglasses, buyers uh, may averagely want to purchase two bears in quantity. So a heat wave with increased demand, because like, you want more sunglasses, right? So we shift the demand curve to the right. This means now, if we look at that same $10 price, buyers will actually now want to uh, buy four pairs of sunglasses because... They love sunglasses and this heat wave, I don't know. Also, take into note that the equilibrium price of sunglasses, where demand equals supply, also changes with the shift, or any shift for that matter. Um, in a future video, I will go over supply and demand shifts in more detail. So just remember for now that an increase in demand is shown in a, a shift for the demand curve to the right. A uh, decrease for demand is shown in a shift to the left. Increase in supply is shown in a shift to the right of for the supply line, and a decrease in supply is shown in a shift to the left. Another part of supply and demand that I'll just touch on briefly is elasticity. Again, I'll make another future video on that, probably to go more in depth, but it is still an important topic on supply and demand, so I'll probably include in this supply and demand video. Elasticity is basically the fact that if the price moves a fraction, the demand or supply, which depend, depends on which is the um, elastic factor, and they both can be the elastic factor, will change drastically. Um, so this, this would be shown in a supply and demand graph of um, a very gently sloping line. It's more like horizontal than it is vertical. So if we look at this, um, this example of rice, it basically means when the price moves a little, there'll be a lot less quantity of demand. Now, inelasticity is um, basically the opposite. It basically means a large movement in price will still only do a small movement in the quantity um, demanded or supplied. So um, this is usually shown in a very steep line. So products like insulin, which are needed to live um, for diabetic people, um, increase in price won't actually change the demand at all. The demand will stay the same. Make sure to check out that video on elasticity and others in supply and demand. 
If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like. And if you enjoy what I do on this channel, please consider subscribing as it will help me out loads. For today's Crash Concepts, my name is Alex Chow and thanks for joining me today.